A few months ago, I made a video about how I learned machine learning some years ago. It was honestly a more interesting experience than I expected, especially when it came to deep learning, in the sense that I wasn't only acquiring a very useful technical skill set, but it also gave me a lot of thoughts and ideas about different areas of life. After I had been experimenting with deep learning algorithms for long enough, I started to gain this inherent top-down intuition about the ecosystem of a deep learning network. I don't really know how else to put it into words, so I'll just bring some examples. For instance, there is this concept in machine learning of under- and overfitting your models on training data. Essentially, what underfitting means is when the machine learning model hasn't picked up the patterns from the training data well enough to make educated predictions, whereas overfitting is what happens when your model has learned the training data almost too well, basically memorized the answers, to the point at which it fails to generalize on data it has never seen before. There are many ways to combat both over- and underfitting, such as by adding regularization, getting more training data, and so on. But one prominent technique is simply, if your model is underfitting, try increasing the complexity of your network, and if it's overfitting, decrease the complexity of your network. This made me think of using various philosophical systems to solve ethical and moral questions. I find that when the core of a system is kept simple, the better it is at generalizing to any questions or edge cases thrown at it. So, for example, you might have come across this phenomenon of people getting into these philosophical discussions which end up involving extremely abstract ideas and, semanti and semantics, riddled in complexity. What I find is that this most often happens when the foundation or premise of your thought system is flawed, which forces you to add more and more layers to deal with incompatible edge cases until it becomes this tangled mess of complexity, riddled in contradictions and making the system unable to generalize on data it has never seen before. And of course, if your system of thought is too simple, you end up making decisions and answering questions almost randomly, with no proper pattern of consistency, much like under- and overfitting in neural networks. This actually applies to a lot of different things as well, such as software engineering, where complexity is the root of all evil, science, and even learning languages. But more on that later. Right now, I want you to define the word intelligence. I am listening. Alright, if you try to define it, there is a chance that you also compared your answer with some dictionary one. You maybe even had the correct answer, but what is correct about it? I mean, there are many different dictionaries with different definitions, and often the meaning of a word changes based on who you ask. In English, depending on the context, intelligence even has multiple meanings. So how do you even represent the word and all its possible meanings in a computer? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. You just take a word and turn it into an arbitrary amount of numbers. So, for example, let's turn every word into 300 numbers, and suddenly this is what the word intelligence looks like. But what do these numbers even mean, and where do we even get them from? Well, these numbers on their own, they essentially don't mean anything. In fact, at first, we fill these word vectors with random numbers. But once we have done that, we will train the word vectors. There are many ways to do so, but a popular and simple approach is just to get a lot of text as training data and try to get the network to predict what word comes next in a sentence. When the network gets the answer wrong using backpropagation or math, we can derive what caused the error and slightly alter the numbers for the corresponding words. Now that we have finished our training, do these numbers mean anything now? Well, in a way, yes. Let's try to visualize these words in a 2D space by compressing the 300 numbers or 300 dimensions down to 2 dimensions. And the results are quite interesting. Words get clustered with other words which have a similar meaning. Basically, the neural network learns to use the word embedding as a context-aware dictionary with intuition-based meanings. This entire concept reminds me an awful a lot of the mental dictionaries idea which I referred to in my 600 days of learning Japanese video. It's a term I first heard about in a video by Matt vs Japan called the role of SRS. Basically, when you memorize a word through a tool such as SRS, you have merely initialized the word, and to fully acquire it, you need to encounter it plenty of times in various different contexts. Immersion or getting massive amounts of input in a language is quite a lot like training on massive amounts of training data, through which you alter the word ever so slightly until it converges into a proper, contextually aware word which you can use intuitively. But wait a minute, when I'm learning a new language and I look up the meaning of a word, it's not really randomly initialized, right? Well, yes, you're right. But if you map the meaning of an English word to its corresponding Japanese one, if there even is one, 
it probably has a slightly different intuitive meaning, especially depending on the context. This is kinda like transfer learning, aka taking a neural network which was already trained for some specific task and fine tuning it to a new one, such as turning our predict the next word in a sentence model to an English to Japanese translator. The benefit of this is that the model will now need much less training data for the new task, as it has already learned the logic of the English language and only needs to be slightly fine tuned for the new task at hand, which to me kind of sounds like initializing a Japanese word with the vector of an English one and later fine tuning it with immersion. Also, coming back to overfitting, I actually have a perfect example of overfitting in real life. You see, I'm using Anki for learning new Japanese words, and I've noticed something interesting. When I've been using Anki on mobile for a long time and suddenly transitioned to using it on PC or vice versa, it seems as if I'm having much more trouble recognizing words and kanji. Why? Well, because the text font is different on my phone and on my PC. I become overfit to a specific Japanese font and fail to generalize on the same data if it's slightly altered. If I was a neural network, you could fix this by feeding me words with both fonts in a balanced manner. To me, it also kind of seems like another way of explaining the idea of why input-based learning methods work so naturally and why the traditional rule and grammar-based methods used in schools seem to be limited. It's actually kind of like comparing deep learning with traditional rule-based AI systems. Generally, while deep learning systems do require massive amounts of training data, they provide a powerful sort of black box intuition-based model. For example, I don't know why I used the got particle here, but it just felt natural. While as rule-based systems are usually just a bunch of conditional statements, they don't really make intuition-based predictions, they make decisions based on set rules. Once again, quite similar to schools which teach languages in this strict rule-based mathematical way, focusing on early output based on set rules instead of natural intuition. Not to say that rule-based systems are bad or anything, they of course have their own place in software, but when it comes to something as stochastic as human language, it's no wonder that deep learning has taken the natural language processing world by a storm recently. Well anyway, thank you very much for watching, that was it for this video, hopefully it was at least somewhat interesting, and if so, and if you'd like to see more in the future, there's only two buttons you gotta press. Wait, no. Well, I'll see you next time.